Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Dhingra and as you all know me by now, I am a proud Fentrammer. Welcome friends, welcome to the Strategic Business Leader Examiner Report session. Examiner Report my friend and I have been saying that all along in various sessions to you is the super important thing because it is very important my friend that you should know in terms of you know what is happening wrong when somebody is sitting for the exam. Examiner Report effectively tells you my friend that this was the or these were the mistakes that happened when student last time appeared for the exam and you really need to know that to ensure my friend that you are not doing that mistake again or you are not repeating that mistake and that's what we intend to cover today my friend and Warren Buffet has said this too that it is always good to learn from your own mistakes but it is always better to learn from the mistakes of the others and that's what we intend to do today because we'll be going through the recent examiner report that has come up from the March June 2022 exams from the strategic business leader standpoint in terms of you know what students have been doing wrong over there and that's what we'll be covering my friend we will be covering this examiner report and I've really crafted and drafted the notes that you really need to have you know to know that what has really wrong, gone wrong there you don't have to read through the complete examiner report and spend time on that we are here for it and that's the reason we really really want you to go through this session till the end to ensure that you're not missing on it is that clear yes sir so should we go and go and start the exam report yes sir but before really going there just subscribe to our channel friends and global to ensure that you're getting all all these exam reports and various technical articles up front subscribe our channel my friend to ensure that you're not missing on that should we go in yes sir all righty moving on to the exam report for the march june 2022 exam all i can tell you my friend is that examiner has categorically mentioned few things in this examiner report and if we can really cover up those areas if we can really come up with the gaps that the people have shown in these exams or in this exam you can certainly certainly get good marks in the exam because you would not be repeating those mistakes and examiner doesn't like that so better you not do that all right moving on my friend i really want to start off with the background of the question that the people got at that point in time it was a question of the yacht yacht manufacturing company yes the examiner company is a yacht manufacturing company all righty and candidate role that was being given as you know you were giving exam over there the candidate role was to be the member of the consulting team which was assisting the ex marine board and of course the chief executive you effectively were on the advisory role you were on the consulting role you were telling the chief executive and the board of the organization in terms of you know what and how they should be responding on on to the different scenarios all righty now what was being given to you in the question let's go through that there were like seven seven exhibits my friend that were there not exhibit but in, in addition to the overview that were there there were like six exhibits that were there in the question let's go through that you had an overview my friend overview of ximarine in terms of you know what is happening in that company all right then ximarine and its competitors there was an article that was there which was issued comparing ximarine and its two principal competitors so this was the exhibit that was there that was a comparison with the competitors all right got it sir so then there was a strategy committee proposal that really talked on in terms of in terms of you know how one should be thinking about as far as the strategy of the organization is concerned and a letter to you the consultant from the chief executive detailing his proposal to create a strategy committee so effectively they wanted to create the strategy committee and you have to have to talk on in terms of you know how and what one should be doing there and at that point in time got it sir then you had the employee satisfaction survey results that was being given to you as part of the exhibit and you really have to go through that in terms of you know what that really says and based on that you have to respond back there was an email from the human resource director to the chief executive about the findings of the employee satisfaction survey and you being the consultant had to had to really really answer the requirement in relation to it got it sir then there was an overview of the investment project my friend that was being discussed 
and the summary of the proposal of the product development that was being given. You have to think about it, go through it and then respond back to the requirement. Got it, sir. Then we had the risk assessment and the mitigation, mitigation, I would say process or a procedure that was being spoken on an assessment by the operation manager of the significant risk and the mitigating activities. You had to go through that and of course see through in terms of, you know, are they being captured rightly or uh, do there is any kind of a gap and so on and so forth. And then last but not the least was the marketing services offer where was there was summary of the proposal from a competitor or from a company which is basically a marketing agency offering marketing services to the Ex-Marine. You had to assess in terms of you know what they are doing, how they are doing and would that suffice for the company like Ex-Marine. These were the exhibits or the areas of the information that was being thrown up to you in terms of you handling that there and then. Isn't that too much my friend in terms of you know what examiner really cover up in those four hours? Yes sir. And that is the beauty of this exam my friend. This exam is not a theory exam. This exam is a complete practical exam which really tests your skills in terms of how one should be reacting and dealing and responding onto the various various scenarios and that would what that is what examiner expects in this question too that is what examiner want you to really take care of he wants you to wear different different hats how you should be handling a marketing issue how one should be handling employee service issue how one should be handling a proposal proposal understanding and the conclusion how one should be thinking about the risk and the mitigation and so on and so forth that is the beauty of this exam and that is what you really need to be prepared for is that clear yes sir now all of these things my friend we have covered at length in our sessions i'm sure you once you'll go through that you would get to know in terms of you know all of the practical nuances that really comes your way as far as these these specific areas are concerned you really have to remember those practical examples and industry level discussions that we have had in order to ensure that we are really really covered up in terms of handling that in the best possible way is that clear yes sir the reason i have bought this examiner report for the discussion my friend is to ensure that we should understand in terms of you know what examiner has been throwing things on us and what all are the issues that examiner is really experiencing from the students who are already giving this exam so that we are able to curb curb those gaps and ensure that we are not repeating the same mistakes is that clear? Yes, sir. All right. The overall analysis, my friend, of this examiner report is something one should be really, really going through. That is that candidate has not assimilated the guidance that has been provided by the ACCA, which is absolutely sad, my friend, wherein there, is, there are certain things that examiner keeps saying, like a broken record, which we really miss on. And examiner was really sad by that. One was that what he specifically highlighted and you can go through the detailed examiner report if you really want to that you have not done the past examination questions and not done the mock exams to ensure that you know how to really respond back how to really uh, handle the cb environment and so on and so forth examiner specifically mentioned that then he also wanted and he also felt a gap in terms of how you're analyzing the exhibit relating an exhibit to the question relating the question to the exhibit and responding back on the exact requirement of what was needed in that question it was a mess over there and he specifically highlighted that he also highlighted one thing specifically which was on cb wherein having the cb functionality understanding of the functionalities and the nuances is super important thing which was being missed by the student and because of which many of the students were not able to complete the entire exam now all of these things my friend we have covered and i'm sure you would know that we have covered the cb we have covered in terms of you know how one should be relating in an you know an, an exhibit to the to the requirement and requirement to the exhibit when we do our revision boot camp you really know that you just have to revise that as a as a refresher for yourself to ensure that you're not missing on that is that clear yes sir all right now the candidate who have failed in this exam my friend examiner really wanted to highlight that because he really wanted you to know in terms of you know why why candidates have failed in this exam in terms of you know the folks who have not done well he specifically mentioned few pointers and i have really got that for you number one lack of development of the points made that is not fully explaining why the point is relevant and of course it is more to more to think in the context of what is the requirement of the task 
many of the times my friend to just to give you an example many of the times you know the point right you know what is needed to be answered but you are not clear in terms of making that point very very evident to the examiner examiner doesn't like that come straight to the point my friend straight to the requirement that is there in the question you should not go hey why the padding of the information when it is not required is not helpful please please note that come to the point understand the exact requirement and kill it there and then there is a raft p my friend that we follow in our you know in, in all our revision bootcamp questions to ensure that we are following that approach in order to not not missing on it please do revise that again and again to ensure that you are not missing on the questions requirement and of course you know that would also help you in terms of structuring your answer and relating an exhibit to the requirement and so on and so forth is that clear yes sir then the lack of analysis skill was also being highlighted wherein you have not or the students have not shown the ability to select the right right exhibit and at times correlating one exhibit to the other and of course getting the relevant information that examiner really needed as far as that requirement of the question is concerned it was a mess all righty then failure to provide with the requirement that was being specified very classy my friend examiner is asking x you are giving y it is not helping you do not do that understand the exact requirement and give it there and then is that clear yes sir failure to respond to the requirement in a professional or the commercially sound manner now this is something i never never understand that why would you not be professional in your exam why would you use some of the words or some of the uh, tone which is not not that examiner really likes never do that this is a professional level exam you have to be professional not only basis the professional skills that you need to demonstrate but generically also you need to be professional you have to you have to have to demonstrate that in order to ensure that you're not missing on it is that clear yes sir lack of understanding of what is strategically significant for the company and this something i have been highlighting my friend in various questions that we have handled together you have to understand that each question that you would get in the exam has a basic theme of what is the strategy of an organization is what is that they are believing in what is that they really really want to fight for and so on and so forth you have to understand that theme and inculcate that theme into your answers so that you are mentioning that this is aligned with the strategy this is not aligned with the strategy you have to talk through on those lines so that examiner feels that you are understanding the overall strategic strategic objective of the firm and you are able to correlate the requirement to that that objective is that clear yes sir lack of commercial acumen you not being practically practically uh, you you're not selecting something that is practically possible or, or commercially viable now there's something one should certainly not be doing you have to show the commercial acumen any which ways in anything and everything that you do you have to have that mindset my friend that you're evaluating anything and everything basis the commercial mindset you have to have to demonstrate that all right then the poor level of technical knowledge which is like you are not having the grasp of various syllabus areas which is something you should certainly certainly avoid and that can really happen if you have gone if you will go through the syllabus area content at least two times like i say revise the sessions at least two times go through the revision boot camp at least two times I give as many mocks as possible so that you are completely completely aware in terms of you know how one should be handling this exam in the best possible way is that clear yes sir then account i think this is a repetitive point which is like wasting time in making irrelevant points you are not not getting on to the point my friend or getting on to the target you are making or padding your answers which are not you know and unnecessarily making the relevant points and not really getting on to what examiner really needs that is not not going to help you please ensure that is that clear yes sir there was one specific comment my friend in this exam in report that i just don't want to come over here i wanted this to come on a specific slide because i wanted to talk on that because this is something that i i just want you to have at the back of your mind the comment is that it was particularly disappointing to see candidates not reading the task requirements carefully enough resulting in them not answering the task that has been asked or not providing everything that the requirement specified this demonstrate poor examination technique and lack of professionalism 
Many of you who have gone through my sessions and of course the revision boot camp, you would know that raft P is something I, I just can't, just can't live with. Because that is your raft to clear this exam, my friend. You really have to understand the requirement of the question like anything and not miss on the exact need of the examiner. An examiner really highlighted that over here that many of the students were missing on that. That is something you should certainly avoid, my friend. Read through the question very carefully in terms of, you know, what he's asking. Many of the times he'll say this and this. This and this and this. So he's asking three things in one question. You have to be aware, my friend, that what is the exact need of the examiner as far as that requirement is concerned. Are you really fulfilling that? Are you really ensuring that that is being answered? And are you really ensure, ensuring that that is complete in itself? Is something you really, really have to make sure. And if you really miss on that, then the comment like this really comes up where an examiner not only feel that you have, you are not having or demonstrating the exam technique, but he's also feeling that you're not being professional because this is also being considered in the general professionalism that you really need to demonstrate in the exam. And that can only happen if you can really understand the exact need of the question and you're able to answer it there and then. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All righty. Moving on, my friend, there were some professional skill issues that were there in this exam. And I really wanted and I thought I'll put it on, a one, on one slide and I'll show it to you that these are the professional skill areas that examiner really highlights. And these are the areas you should certainly, certainly not, not let, you should not let him, let him have this in you when you are appearing for your exam. Please ensure that you're not repeating this mistake. One of the mistake is overlong paragraphs with aspect of the task, for example, problems with the proposal discussed in the single paragraph containing multiple points. I have said this like a broken record, my friend, in our sessions and of course demonstrated also certain sessions and certain questions like this, that when you are giving the examiner specific pointers, make small, small paragraphs. Do not make bullets mail small small paragraph do not have one big paragraph over there it is not gonna be helpful to you because examiner doesn't like that he specifically says that when you are giving some small small pointers make small small paragraph in relation to that rather than giving one huge para having the plethora of information that is not gonna be helpful the small small things my friend these are like small small things that can really change the fortune of your exam that can really give you a very different fortune when your result will come and that can only happen if you're following this rigorously and not missing on that. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Not paying attention to the format required. Oh my God, this is classic. I have been saying this in a number of times that format is a very important thing. Again, RAFP also has the format into it. Format is the super important thing. You really have to know what all formats are being, you know, being used, whether it is an email, whether it is a press release, whether it is a memo, whether it is a report, whether it is a letter and whatnot. You should know what the format is and what is to be followed. We have covered that at length, my friend, in our revision bootcamp. Please go and revise that once more if you're missing on that. But please, please, please do not, do not do this mistake in your exam. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Not considered who is receiving the document produced. For example, task was that candidates were to produce letter that was to addressed to the employee. So you're writing a letter that is to be addressed to the employees. All right. Now talking throughout the letter about the employee in the third person rather than trying to communicate them directly is a big concern. I'm going to write a letter to the employee. Of course, on the behalf of the leadership, I am given a task to write a letter to the employee. Now, my letter should be addressing employee like I am addressing them directly because I am going to write a letter to them. That is what is needed. I cannot say now that you should be highlighting these two employees. Now, this is something that employees should understand and so on and so forth. Employees are not third party in that letter. Letter is to be directed to the employees in a direct way saying that you know what this is something that you should be doing as if i'm talking to the employees straight away directly please please know that these are again small small things that you can change in yourself you can really inculcate you can really ensure you know to not repeat this mistake and of course have these kind of comments for you when you will sit for exam 
Is that clear? Yes, sir. Then poor comments or the or the tone that is being used. For example, if you're if you are say you're not liking something that a director is doing or anybody in the leadership is doing for that matter, you cannot have a poor tone, my friend. You cannot have a poor language being used. This is a professional exam. Anything and everything that you mention over there has to demonstrate the professionalism at large. You cannot, you cannot do anything which is not right. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, last but not the least is failing to demonstrate you know, sound commercial acumen and of course making suggestions for the risk mitigation activities in task 4. All right. For example, suggestion of moving all the ex-marine um, operations to the high ground. Now, just, just taking a back seat on that. Many of the times, he, he gives you the commercial acumen, wherein the solution that you really need to provide for, you have to really assess that wearing a commercial acumen hat saying that, is that practically possible? Is that commercially feasible? You have to have that hat. You cannot just suggest that, you know what, change the entire operation. Changing entire operation is easy said than done, right? It is not possible to change entire operation overnight. There is a cost being involved. There is a legal complications being involved. There are issues that you really have to handle on the practical, practical scenario issues that you that you really have to go through. Now, how would you manage that? If you're really suggesting that without giving the appropriate, appropriate background into, or appropriate disclaimer around it, examiner would feel that you're just not applying the commercial acumen. If you're saying something, you have to say it with the logic that I'm saying this, but these are the problems that I foresee. And these are the steps that one can really think through in terms of overcoming on that. I cannot just say that change the room in one day. It won't happen. It won't happen. You have to apply the commercial acumen to ensure that you're giving the suggestion what is being accepted or will be accepted. And that is more logical at that point in time. Is that clear? Yes, sir. All righty. Moving on, my friend, some of the suggestions that I have. Now, these are the suggestions that I really want you to really take on because these are the um, discussions that we have already had in our sessions and, of course, in a revision boot camp wherein we have gone through various questions. You really have to have these at the back of your mind, my friend, because many of these things may come your way in the exam and you really have to handle it there and then to ensure that you're not missing on that. Should we go through? Yes, sir. Candidate must spend sufficient time in planning and considering carefully what they will write to ensure that their answers are, of course, number one, covering all the aspects of the tasks that are required. Time management is important, right? If you are short of time, you are bound to miss something. Time management is something very well covered in a revision bootcamp. If you need, if the need be, go through that video, my friend. That would help you in terms of, you know, what one should be doing in terms of reading the exam, reading the exam question, writing the, you know, planning for writing the exam. And of course, how one should be thinking about format, how should be, how one should be thinking about professional skills and so on and so forth. Just go through that, you know, those sessions. And I'm sure, you know, you would be able to at least have a recap of what you have already covered. All right. You should be structuring logically, you know, your answers <clears throat> on the on the basis of the task that has been provided to you, ensuring the professional skills. You should be balancing, my my friend, in terms of depth of the discussion that you have had. Many of times we write more than what is needed. One should avoid that. You should always cover the most important point first. Now, this is again a kind of professionalism that you're demonstrating. If you're telling the examiner that you would start off with the most important points and then move on to the least important points, examiner would love that. If you know all the points, but you start off with the least important point first, examiner is not going to be liking it and of course not going to be helping you in the exam as far as your result is concerned. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Again, not making the same point, you know, more than one time and uh, not padding, you know, your answer with unnecessary information. Say it once, examiner understands that you don't have to repeat that in a different way. That's not going to be help, helping you. Practice past examination questions, my friend. CVEs must, must, must. You have to practice few questions. The more you'll do that, the better you are from the examination standpoint. We have practiced many questions in our revision bootcamp. Just go through those, those sessions. I'm sure that would help you in terms of how you can address issues in the exam. We have got various past examination questions also, my friend, in our revision bootcamp that would help you in terms of gauging what is needed from the answering standpoint. And last but not the least, follow the format, my friend. Follow the format and the professional skills that is needed. Raft P, and I completely, completely agree with this thought, is that Raft P is your raft to really get off this exam. 
please please practice fp the way we have practiced that in our revision boot camp practice that in the various mock exams that you'll be giving the more you'll give that my friend the best you are from the standpoint of killing this exam in the best possible way is that clear yes sir should we move ahead Now, this is what my friend I wanted to cover in this examiner report. This examiner report really tells us in terms of, you know, what is really happening on the examiner side when he is reviewing the exam, how is he feeling and the kind of things he really wants to highlight. We have already seen and spoken out over here. Important is my friend that we should be able to learn and appreciate the mistakes that are happening in past and ensuring that we are not doing these mistakes when we are sitting for exam. I really want you to my friend to know this and of course have this at the back of your mind so that you are not missing on this and of course you are able to clear this exam in the best possible way. Is that clear? Yes sir. If you have liked the video my friend, if you have liked the content in terms of you know this being helpful to you, I would say just press the like button and of course share it with all of your friends my friend so that they can also gain from this and of course know in terms of what they should be knowing from the SPL exam standpoint. Is that clear? Yes, sir. and towards the end, please subscribe to our channel Fintram Global to ensure that you're not missing on these important videos as they come your way. Now, that's what I wanted to cover in this session, my friend. I'll see you again in the next one. Till then, this is Pankaj Singra signing off.